Welcome to Now on Fuse Logic TV. My name is Vaughn, and my guest today is Dr. Ron Brown, Medical Director of True Balance. And the discussion that we're going to have today is on hormone replacement. Welcome, Dr. Brown, and I'm sure we're going to have an interesting discussion. Thank you, Vaughn. So, why don't we just go in and get some of the um, main ideas touched upon, and we'll go from there and uh, see if our audience would like to come in with some questions of their own. Okay. So why don't you speak to me on the difference between bioidentical hormones and on the ones that usually are prescribed? Okay. Well, Vaughn, that's a great question because basically what we're talking about when we're talking about bioidentical hormones is we're talking about hormones that on a molecular basis are exactly the same as the human body has always made. And the question actually brings up an important distinction. People are looking for natural hormones and bioidentical hormones are synthetic hormones just the same as pharmaceutical hormones. All of these hormones are made from plant products like the Mexican yam. The only difference is pharmaceutical hormones require additions to the molecule itself that allows a patent process to be placed on that molecule. The problem with changing a hormone molecule is you change its actions bioidentical hormones really are better termed human identical hormones, meaning the molecule, the hormone molecule is identical on a molecular basis to the molecule or the hormone that a woman or man has made her entire, his or her entire life. Well, I would make the assumption that that would be a much safer and better uh, hormone replacement. There's no question that what's ended up happening is synthetic or Pharmaceutical hormones first developed as the only hormones available, and it wasn't appreciated that the modifications to the actual hormone molecule made produced some unwanted effects, and that the actual human identical hormone is, is much safer and just as effective. So what about the risks? Um, there was a time when there it was reported that there was an increased risk to women and that kind of scared people a little bit anyway. So that would be then the pharmaceutical hormone that had that reputation or? Correct. All of this question comes back to a huge um, study done down in the United States called the Women's Health Initiative. And it was a gigantic study looking to try and prove that the treatment of postmenopausal women with hormones made them live longer and happier. The problem with the study was they chose pharmaceutical hormones that had actually been altered from the human identical hormone, and that created some difficulties. The bottom line is that the progestin that they used, and the viewers have to understand, there's a difference between progesterone and progestin. Progesterone is what a woman made all her life when she menstruates or when she cycles. Progestins are chemical modifications of that progesterone molecule. In the Women's Health Initiative, it turned out to be Provera, or Madroxyprogesterone Acetate, and Provera had some undesirable effects. The two undesirable effects were an increase in the risk of heart disease and an increase in the risk of breast cancer. You know, and I'm sure that, that when women, you know, found that information out, they were backing off. And at that time, I don't remember, you know, and I do remember the study, actually, but I don't remember ever hearing about something as an alternative. Well, there's no question when the study came out, when the Safety and Monitoring Committee stopped the use or stopped the study from proceeding because of safety issues around the increased risk of breast cancer, there was a huge backlash mm -hmm. against hormone replacement therapy, but unfortunately, a lot of women stopped hormone replacement therapy not understanding that they were really throwing out the baby along with the bathwater, right. so to speak. There are, in fact, alternatives to the, the hormones used in that study, bioidentical hormones being one of those alternatives, that I think personally in five years of research and clinical use are, in fact, much safer than what was used in the Women's Health Initiative. So how, so how would a woman go about making sure that she was looking at her individual body and making sure that when 
um, when the replacement for natural hormones or plant hormones was being made, that really, you know, you're really looking at what's going on for the individual. Because I'm sure that when you're looking at estrogen or progesterone or the different hormones, each of us are leveling out a little different. So, so how would we go about that? Well, that's an excellent point. At the True Balance Clinic, what we do is we do a detailed assessment ahead of time to basically look at the levels of the different hormones and also the relationship of each other. And the reason being is that hormones are actually balanced with each other. Estrogen and progesterone have a certain balance. Right. Estrogen and testosterone have another balance. It's only by knowing where a woman's starting off at and then what are the symptoms that you'd like to control that you can find a balance for her that equates with a better quality of life and, and um, increased life length. Yeah, and, and it certainly is symptomatic. <clears throat> I mean, you know, when hormones start to decrease or, we're, you know, we're, we're going into that next stage of life, the symptoms can be quite devastating for some women. Um, so the benefits, I would think, if uh, I hear you correctly, is that when we really get to distinguish the levels, the quality of life can improve. Uh, absolutely. The, the background to this is that all of us, from the age of 25 on, decline on the basis of our hormone levels. So. From age 25, we peak as far as our hormones are concerned, and then it's a sled, steady and gradual decrease. Some of the hormones decreasing faster than others, and this creates imbalances as well as overall deficiencies. Um, when you can find the deficiencies and correct the imbalances, their quality of life dramatically improves. Well, you know, this show is um, going all over the world. So there's so many people that need um, the information and maybe in their country or in their area, they're not able to get that personalized um, expertise or help. And I'm sure that you know they can at least explore that. But the thing that excited me very much is that you have actually written a book and you have a DVD and that you know certainly books get to you know, go around the world a lot easier and they can find out more. But I see here that you have discovered your true balance, which of course is a, you know, a great title. And uh, the publisher is Advantage. So they could certainly go online and see where they can buy it. So why don't you tell me a little bit about your motivation and a little bit about the overview of this book. Well, the book is actually a great example of a patient starting a process. A patient five years ago came in and asked me, what did I know about bioidentical hormones? And at that time, I didn't know anything about them. So it started me on a process that took several years to go down to uh, training courses in the States, of course I'm centered in Canada, so down to the States to learn more about it. As a practicing gynecologist, <coughs> excuse me, as a practicing gynecologist, I um, was very well versed in hormones, mm -hmm. but what I learned at these courses was far beyond what I had been exposed to in conventional medical training. And so we owe a great debt to some of the celebrities down in the States, the primary one being Suzanne Somers, right. who really was the celebrity that got this grassroot mo grassroots movement going. And really, that's what it is now. This is a movement coming from patients who go for treatment, yes. feel better, refer family and friends. Right. And it's sort of taken the conventional medical community by storm and I think right now they really don't know how to respond to this kind of thing. The reason for me for writing the book was it's very uncomfortable as a gynecologist for a woman to be looking at this area of treatment, wondering about the safety, wondering about the benefits, and I'm referring her to a book by Suzanne Summers for the only credible information there. So I really felt we had to go the next step to a medical book looking at what are the safety concerns, what are the issues, why are we where we are right now? You know, I have to say that um, had I had some information on this at 39, because when I went to the doctor with the symptoms, he said, no, it's around 50. Not so, you know, much younger for me and very symptomatic and no help and certainly, you know, nothing to get through those first five years. Um, so I'm looking forward 
to um, attending your practice and having something done on, on my own behalf. Now, I'm so lucky because you are right here where I live, which is in Sherwood Park and in the province of Alberta. And so having access to you is great. So, um, and the book at least gives access and allows for some questions. What about the medical field that really is out there and women do go to them? And I, I certainly know that a lot of them get uh, prescribed a lot of antidepressants because the doctors really, the, sympt the symptoms can look like depression. So um, have you sound, found that in your practice? There's no question that right now we are treating symptoms of hormone deficiency, in particular testosterone, with antidepressants. Okay. There's, there's a syndrome called androgen insufficiency in women, and the symptoms of that, which is reflected by declining testosterone levels, are identical to the symptoms of depression. It's just that right now, we have no approved testosterone products in Canada other than through a compounding pharmacy to treat testosterone insufficiency directly. So instead, conventional medical practitioners are basically forced to use antidepressants to um, treat symptoms of androgen insufficiency. Okay, um, I just want to uh, allow the audience uh, and the public to come in with a question. Of course, that's what's great about this show is that we actually get our viewers to listen live and be able to come in. So um, our question of the day. Christine in the chat room asks, how long does it take once I start taking them for me to start seeing a difference? Good question. Well, Christine, that's, that's a great question, and it actually doesn't take long. Depending on what the initial imbalances are, a lot of times women will suffer with either anxiety or poor sleep. Those will improve if, if the hormones are prescribed proper, properly within a week. And in fact, that's one of the big advantages that I see with, with women is that if you get them sleeping better, they immediately feel better. Um, symptoms of hot flashes, vaginal dryness improve very quickly. Um, supplementation or replacement with testosterone often will take a period of three, four, six weeks before definite improvement is noticed. And the interesting thing is when you're on a treatment program, you can actually monitor that program, see the progress that a person is making with actual laboratory tests. So it's a matter of correlating the symptoms with the person's levels and moving to a place where they feel dramatically better. You know, um, I have to say that it's very exciting and that I will make sure that I get your book and I will certainly make sure that I visit you and, and find out a whole lot more about myself because, you know, when it comes to symptoms, I've certainly gone through many. And so um, I see that our time is quickly over, way too quick. And I want to thank everyone for tuning in to our very first episode of Now featuring Dr. Ron Brown and, of course, our television station for you to tune into, which is Fused Logic. And uh, you will see many more programs provided. And thank you so much, Dr. Brown, for coming in. And also, let me thank you on behalf of women for you listening to somebody and deciding that you wanted to discover more. Because as a pioneer, remember, you know, the ball just gets rolling. And I want to thank you so much for well, being thank here. thank you, Vaughn. I thank appreciate you. the opportunity. Thanks.